Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Tom Stewart here with Cleaning Business Today. I'm with my partner, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hi. And uh, we're here to uh, do our normal afternoon call to talk about smart business moves uh, in a uh, COVID-19 world. And yesterday we um, started off by, well, not so sort of start off, we finished yesterday by uh, wanting to talk a little bit about, you know, how many cases do we currently have in the United States? And I thought it would be a good idea for us to go back and maybe just look at a little bit of history and bang. Here's kind of a graph. This is uh, the Center for Disease Control. And uh, this uh, little guy right here shows us the number of cases by day in the United States. And the first one of these that we did was back in March. It was on March 12th. So I can take my little handy dandy cursor here and go back to March 12th and you see how these bars get really flat, right? Bang. 1,629 cases of COVID-19 diagnosed as on the uh, 12th of March. Can you guys see that? It is a little bit small, Tom. Maybe, maybe, but... maybe I can do this. Is that a little bit better? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. A lot okay. better. So I'm going to go back to and, and really it's just you and me right now. Nobody's even on watching that. Oh, really? Nobody expects us to be here at two o'clock. <laughs> okay. I see six eyeballs here up in the top. So maybe we got a few people. Oh, Anybody really? Right. You know, hit us up in comments just to let us know that, uh, you know, there's something going on out there. Hey, yeah. hey, Leslie. Hi, Joe, nice Thank you guys. Hi guys. Oh, my mine doesn't even show anybody watching right now. Okay, Leslie says she oh. has no sound. Wants to know if it's just her. I, I hear oh. Liz. Hey, uh, yeah, so I hear you hear us. Anybody else not hear us? I'm guessing they all hear us. Are we? That's what they'd be all saying, huh? So, hi guys. Well, you guys were actually expecting us to be here at two. You are See, really Liz, good. This was Liz's idea. She was like, let's start on time. It's like, we're going to mess everybody up if we start on time. <laughs> okay. Hey, but look at, we're getting some thumbs up about starting on time there, Tom. Really? Okay, well. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, do I'll try to do better getting uh, Liz together so we can start on time <laughs> tomorrow. Yes. You're going to have to do that. Do better yeah. at that, Tom. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit me. I'm sorry, guys. I'll, I'll do better. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yesterday we were talking, we were, wanted to like get an update on the number of cases of uh, COVID-19 in the United States. And I thought it would be fun to go back and look at the number of cases we had when we started doing uh, these Facebook Lives. And that was on March 12th. And if I go back here to March 12th. Here we go. Come on, cooperate. 1,629 cases. So, wow, we were we were on the cutting edge of this, weren't we, Liz? Yeah, uh, that, that, that's what I was thinking. I mean, look at that, you guys. Do you remember when we first started doing these Facebook Lives? We were, we felt like, oh my gosh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. It's terrible. Look at how far into this thing we are and how we're all adapting. I mean, I feel like we're all doing really well. We're in a much better place than we were then. Everything was so scary and we didn't know what was gonna happen. What are those numbers now, Tom? Well, as you go, you see they get bigger. And you remember we were talking about this thing called exponential growth, that when numbers double every X number of days, at some point those numbers are getting really big. Well, that's what we're seeing here. So like at the beginning of April, just to kind of give some compare, some perspective, it was 213,000. So in two weeks. Yeah, for about two, maybe three weeks, it went from 1,600. Now part of that too is they were doing better testing. They didn't have, you know, yeah. testing was, 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 was kind of weak when we started back in March. We had good reason to believe there were, more cases than what this is saying because they didn't have a way of testing it. But here we are. What is the day? The twenty what third? 
and it went from 200,000 wang to over 800,000 in 20 some odd days. So it went from 200,000 to 400,000 to 800,000. It doubled twice in like a uh, 20 day period. So it's been um, doubling like every 10 days, roughly. So the interesting thing will be to see where are we 10 days from now and is that uh, 800,000, 1.6 million? I don't think so. I think that in some of the bigger cities, they're starting to see a decrease in the, uh, in the growth rate. So it shouldn't be that bad, but it'll be more cases than, than 800,000. Yeah, for, for sure, more than 800,000. But any, uh, have you heard, Tom, and, and you're much more into these numbers than I am, do, you ha do they have any predictions yet about, you know, where this is going to kind of top out before it starts going down the other way? <sighs> yeah, there's a couple of models. They're bump, bump. Let me see. Nope. No AC units. Where is the model? Can I cooperate? But also, aren't the number of cases increasing because the more testing is available? Um, absolutely, Sarah. But we have had a good chunk of testing for a while now. But absolutely, that's what's going on. Hmm. So that's, that's why I'm wondering if we're showing that yet. This is projected deaths, not cases. And this would be by day. And where are we here? Looks like we're on the down. The size of the death, yeah, right? for for the entire United States, it is. Okay, well, that's good news. And what, where are we seeing that flatlining? June thirtieth, no, June twenty sixth, something like that, maybe. That's what this model is showing. Okay. And it, you know, it looks like a, that for you know things are looking a lot better now than what they we thought. We're in better shape than where we thought we would be a month ago. Yeah. For, for sure. Yeah. 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 And as much as people are not happy with the direction things have gone in and the way things have been done, for sure we had a, a much better outcome as far as our medical resources than was really feared. Much, much better. <laughs> Oh, this is the thing you're going to show us from yesterday. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hey, Ernie. Hey, Ernie, how are you doing? Hey, I think that we need to see this just to give us some perspective of how this virus can spread. This okay. is a uh, city in China, um, Guangzhou, and it's kind of just north of uh, north of Hong Kong, kind of on the port. That's not important, though. If you see table A here, table A is all one family and they're sitting here in this restaurant and there's an air conditioning unit blowing here, going across this way. There is a return over here and it's just kind of circulating air back and forth over tables A, B and C. The person setting it at seat A1 was asymptomatic, but they had COVID-19. They didn't know they were sick, but they were they were shedding, and the droplets that they were emit, emitting were getting caught in this airflow from the air conditioner. So what happened over subsequent days? This was the twenty fourth that all of these people were eating in this restaurant at the same time. Tables A, B, C, D, E, F. Nobody was setting up D, but E and F had the people. People started getting sick like on the 29th, the 29th, February 2, and all of these people were the same family. But you got people over here at table B, February 1st, 5th, 5th, January 31st, January 27th, 
It's like nine people got sick because of this one person all eating in the same restaurant at the same time because the droplets got caught up in the air conditioner and flying around. As house cleaning professionals, I'm not sure exactly what all this may mean to us, but I think it's just important to see this to give us uh, some healthy respect as to, to you know how this thing can spread. I worked in a grocery store this afternoon and I haven't been going out much in, in, in public places, but very few people here in South Carolina even had any type of face mask on, you know, like a uh, procedure oh. mask or anything. And it was just kind of like another day for, for a lot of people, even the people that were working at this particular grocery store, they, they kind of had masks, but they really weren't wearing them seriously. It was like around their neck and off of their nose and stuff like that. And, I see stuff like this, and it, and it just makes me think that uh, this thing's a little more serious than what it, what uh, a lot of people are, are, are treating it. And I don't want us to, to freak out and go crazy, but you know, I think I, th I think just seeing examples. And this was a study that uh, CDC did here, in the United States, kind of put this out two days ago, I believe, just as an informative thing for us to to, to know and appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely not not um, a, a minor thing for sure. Uh, I don't know. Uh, hopefully we're getting on the down side of it. It is a concern when I hear about people in South Carolina not doing anything. I, I guess it's for me, it seems odd because here where I am, uh, Pacific Northwest in Olympia, Washington, um, you know, and we had a big, a big um, to do up here in northern Washington, Kent, about an hour and a half, maybe two hours away from us. Um, everybody here wears masks. I would say that if you go into a store, 90 percent of the people are wearing masks. And when you're out and about, that's that's what you see. People aren't really walking around a lot. Everyone's wearing masks. Um, I heard. I'm not sure if this is true, Leslie, but I heard that masks were mandatory in California. Is that true? <clears throat> Down there? Yeah. Um, I yeah, some some northern cities like New York, they made them mandatory last week, I believe. Um, yeah, well, New York has. For some reason, I was thinking California was too. We're not mandatory here, but they're highly recommended. Um, um, they're giving free, free ones out all over the place where you can... You know, um, people want want them to wear them. Uh, you don't see a lot of people walking, like even couples walking together as much as you used to. No kids in stores anymore. That's like a huge no-no around here. 20% uh, in, in Arizona. Mandatory in Pennsylvania. And yes, for California. Oh, so no for Leslie says no in California. And Teresa says yes. So it must be different areas. That they're <clears throat> that they are mandatory. Are the are the face coverings doing any better with 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 PPE? I mean, I think that they definitely are doing better, but are they to the point where they have all they need, or are we as just normal citizens supposed to not be, you know, going out on 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 Amazon and, and looking for N95 respirators and things like that? Yeah, I think they still want us to not be using respirators, but face masks. Um, right. They want us to be wearing face masks, but not um, not the, the respirators. You know, I never really gave the, like they, I guess they call them procedure masks or, you know, the, the, the hospital mask, surgical masks. Never gave those much thought or dust masks or anything else either. But I've been playing around with several different styles and, you know. They all have their pros and cons and their varying degrees of discomfort and glasses fogging and a lot of other issues. Um, I never really understood that wearing these types of masks in the different styles, you know, they all pose different challenges, don't they? They do. And you know, I haven't found one that doesn't make it harder to breathe, that's not um, really hot and just very uncomfortable too. I mean, I, I really never even considered that before since I don't wear one on a regular basis, but man, these people that are working really hard wearing these things at the same time, it's tough. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and we were talking, you know, the other week about right. doing the uh, restorative cleaning, the, you know, has hazard, you know, cleanup and, you know, the full respirators and the Tyvek and stuff like that. And I just take this little, you know, procedure mask and put it on my face. And it's like, oh, God, I can't live like this. I, I can't wait to get out of the store so I can get my mask off. I'm so uncomfortable. I feel like such a whiner. I, I actually haven't said that publicly, Tom. So thanks for shaming me into it. Oh, bad, yeah. And the glasses are bad too, Leslie. They are. Yeah. Aren't they? You're fogging up and I get, I, you know, somebody told me that you got to get the mask underneath your glasses because if it's over yeah. top of you, you're completely, completely messed up. Maybe we should do, uh, you know, get some different designs and kind of review them and talk about the pros and cons. I mean, some go over your ears, some tie behind your head. Yeah. Uh, the ones that go around the ears are also uncomfortable. I mean, they are for me, I guess. Oh, there's all so many different kinds out there, but I, Really, I guess I'm just happy that people are finding a way to wear these and that we have found something that is working better than nothing. Have you seen the video of, um, I can't remember which, I really wish I hadn't opened my mouth right now because I can't <laughs> remember any of the details of this video. It's about wearing, wearing masks and how the country is doing so much better than other countries because that's the one thing that they did different was to make sure that everybody's wearing masks. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, it a good video. I remember talking to Maria Dorian. A number of you know Maria. She uh, has a, a business called Task Away where, where she helps with uh, virtual assistants. And um, she lives in Spain, but she spent some time here in the States, I guess about a month ago, maybe. And actually, she had to catch a plane to get back to uh, Spain before they shut off. Oh, yeah. the, going back forth, it was, it was just super scary. Kind of a hassle. But she said that she felt so out of place because she was the only person. And I forget, you know, she made a couple of hops in Europe through airports before she actually, she lives in, in Valencia, Spain. She was the only person without a face mask. Everybody was, was, was wearing masks. So, you know, I think if you see it, you know, you, you know, Asian countries are, are, are doing it. We really, and I, and I hate to say it, but I just think really, you know, we don't have the proper appreciation for how pathogens spread. And, and I mean, it's, we're, we're wrong. <laughs> we, we should be, we should, should be more, yeah. uh, more responsible in that regard as, as a society in this country. Yeah, I agree. We, but we're learning, you know, so little by little, we're going to get there. Oh, I have to give a shout out to my buddy here, Julia, Julia Hill. She is from my neighborhood. Hey, Julia. It's from, from Lacey. We, we live eh, maybe 10 minutes away from each other. Wow. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so I haven't seen her on one of these calls before. So that's awesome. Uh, so, uh, anything else having to do with money, Tom? I have not heard any kind of money updates. Uh, I did get fully funded for my idol today. Wow. So, okay. yeah, yeah. So that that's great. I was happy about that. But I haven't heard anything about um, uh, the PPP monies or anything. Hey, Julia. Uh, the PPP monies or. Um, the new stimulus, the two thousand dollars stimulus. I need to figure out what the name of that thing is. I'm I'm always late to the boat with that. You like my that, nails, Ernie? Go to myself. The, the <laughs> house is going to be voting on the new PPP monies here shortly. I mean, they might be doing it now. If I mean, they were. I was checking it at four, and they were voting on some other stuff. But it was it was going to be later in their agenda. So. Yeah. You know, the word the word is it's gonna it's gonna pass easily. So yeah. I presume that the president will then sign it and, and, and they'll be back in business. I know that a lot of the banks have been processing the PPP applications all along since they ran out of money last week on the on the assumption that those monies were gonna be there. So yeah. um, you know so the thinking is that once the monies are actually there, a lot of it's gonna be hitting the street a lot faster than it did the first round. The first round, when the monies were approved, the banks didn't even 
know where to start. So they should have a pretty good head start on, on this tranche of money. Yeah. Have you seen the last time they showed us the the bills, the acts, everything that was coming through before they got passed so that we could sort of read through them and see what was getting passed? Have you seen that with this one? Because I know they did make some changes. I have not. But I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it's out there. I mean, that's just kind of yeah. the way Congress works. Um, yeah, I need to look around a little bit. Uh, so somebody, let's see, Bobby wants to know how long it took to get the full funding. So I signed on everything today, and I got my uh, advance, I, I want to say Friday. Do you remember, Tom? Was it Friday? The, yeah. I think, I it, think was. it was. Friday. It, was late. it was about almost a week ago. Yeah. You're, you're better with time than I am. Yeah. Because I think we've only been doing this for three weeks. But you know, I got my I got my advances. I mean, they be, they've come in and like we do, do do several different companies over the course of the last week, maybe maybe longer for the for the first one, and we haven't gotten any more idle money since then. Yeah, I I don't know that there's a lot of requirements for spending your idle, Sarah. Tom, do you? I haven't heard a lot about requirements for that. Uh, operating expenses is the big thing. Yeah. Um, there are, I don't, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, you know, but, but you, you want to read the fine, fine print on that. I mean, I think one, one of the assumptions is you don't, don't have access to a lot of other sources of money. I don't know if they, you don't have to verify that, but that's kind of like one of the assumptions. So, um, I've heard it said that you, you, if you take it and, and go out and just pay other debt with it, that might be, a, you know pay down you know, other loans and stuff like that. That might be a gray area. You're supposed to use it for the operating of your business. You don't want to go out and buy yourself a Tesla. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Unless you put uh, so, a on the side that says American made and then maybe you can get away with that. <laughs> hey, Leslie, I'm not understanding what you're saying here. You say I'm not, but asking for pictures. I'm guessing there's a typo in there, but I'm not sure which word is the typo. Got an idea, Tom? I have no. Nope. I bet you Siri is not playing well with her. That's what I'm thinking. So I, I'm thinking, but I can't figure out usually which word is a little bit. Hmm. That, that happens uh, with me sometimes, but it's always like a four-letter word or something that's there. Mm -hmm. that, you know, you got, you got like yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. What do we got here? Um, somebody says. Heather wants to know, one of my peeps still couldn't get in last night. What can we do to get her to take it? So uh, I'm guessing that this is about the COVID training, Tom. Heather, I'm guessing that's about the COVID training. Um, you should be able to access it today. It's $39. We told you guys this was coming. For all of you people that are mad right now, come a little closer to the screen so I can smack you, okay? <laughs> We told you. We warned you. We told you. And we, we simply cannot spend any more time, you guys, administering it for free. It takes takes resources to do that. So here you go. It's $39. And if you're frustrated, you know, next time when we say it's only going to be free for a short time, get in there, listen to us. Because it's coming again. we got some more training coming down the pike here. Um, uh, more things are going to be coming. So. Uh, listen to us when we're telling you this stuff because we're not we're not lying over here. Um, Leslie wants to know about the idol. She's at oh no, Susan, sorry. Um, have you applied for more from the idol after you received the grant portion? Okay, so Susan, um, the I applied for the idol, which is a loan, and when what happens with the idol is you get the the first portion, the ten, the ten thousand dollars, and it might not be ten thousand dollars, but the ten thousand dollars that advance is towards your loan. So that that's part of the loan. It's just forgiven if you um, spend it on certain things. And so that that ten thousand dollars is just part of the bigger loan. It's just you don't have to pay it pay it back if you spend it on certain things. Um, so ho hopefully that was a little bit clearer. Oh, Leslie, yes, it, it is a loan, yeah, and yes, it is. It's not a grant, but it that ten thousand dollars 
acts like a grant. And that's why we all keep calling it a grant. Oh. Sorry, had to turn off the heater, you guys. Um, we keep calling it a grant because it's free money and so it's forgiven. So it's like a grant. They're just not calling it a grant. It's an advance on the loan. And I, my, my guess is so that people didn't think it was this $10,000 that was disconnected from anything else that they wanted to make sure that we knew that this $10,000 was connected to the loan amount. That's the only thing I can come up with. So, right. And, and the reason, and that's the reason why it's my thinking is because they changed it for a reason, right? It was called a grant. And then they said, no, 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 it's not a grant. It's an advance on the loan. And the only reason I can think that they did that is because they wanted us to recognize that it's not just you know there's a lot of monies coming coming out right lots of different things coming down the pike and i think they wanted to make sure that we understood that it wasn't just a ten thousand dollar grant it was an advance on this bigger economic disaster loan the idol so so that that's my thinking there i think because there were some monies that were just plugged out there here, here's some money that's just being plunked out. Here's twelve hundred dollars. So, and some of the states are doing things like that too. They're just plunking some money out. I think they just wanted to make sure that we understood this is not just a grant. It's an advance on this bigger loan. And I don't know. I believe that if you took that ten thousand dollar advance, that that sort of tied you into the loan. Not to say you couldn't return it, but it kind of tied you into that loan. Although I'm not exactly sure how, since I didn't personally sign anything. Uh, I just put in my paperwork and then got the money in my account. They didn't even tell me it was coming. So I don't know what you think about that, Tom, but that's kind of how I have processed it in my brain because I, I need just a little bit of logic somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking what a country, you know? <laughs> just, yeah. You know, I was talking to somebody last night. It's like we're trying to play a game where all the rules have changed. It's like you know, playing baseball, and after you hit it, they tell you you can't run to first base anymore. So it's I'm kind of trying to do business instinctively, but the rules are different and trying to, to figure uh, it out. I, we do have a couple of questions here, too. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Um, someone asked if anyone's doing in-home estimates. So if you're asking us, uh, we have never done in-home estimates. Castle Keepers hasn't, American Made hasn't. So we never did them before and we're not doing them now. If other people are doing them, you should um, put that on here. Thank you, Denise, saying that I clarified that very well. Thank you, appreciate that. Tom's volume seems, sounds better to me. I heard it drop a little bit ago as well, Linda. Does it sound okay to you now? It sounds, sounds good to me. Um, okay, Heather is talking about the test again, Tom. He's, she says that they tried to take it last night, but it wouldn't let them in, which is different than, you know, asking her for money or something like that. It just wouldn't, it sounds like it wouldn't let her in to do it. Leslie Bargain, thank you, Leslie. I know, you, you're one of the people that said $99, Leslie, I remember. Yeah. So, go ahead, Tom. So... I can, I can tell you that a whole lot of people are successfully taking it. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure specifically what the problem is, but, uh, we'll, 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 you know, hit us up, hit us up on the side. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. You know where to find us. And Julio wants to know if it's $39 a person, Tom. That is correct. Okay. And I uh, can't wait for more training. It's coming. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, can solo workers apply for it as well? Solo workers can apply for everything, Shannon. <laughs> and I recommend that you do it. Recommend, I mean, I recommend that you apply for every single thing. Worst case scenario is say, no, we're not going to give it to you. Apply. The application process is super easy. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. Um, does an employee who was laid off and hired back then says that they need to take FMLA count towards your full-time equivalent count by the June 30th date? 
So if they are, if That's they enough. are, well, I'm, I'm thinking that she's probably meaning the FFCRA. Um, clarify for us, Rita. Yeah, the, if, paid, uh, the Paid Family Medical Leave Act. Yeah, the new fancy acronym where yeah. they're taking Families first. time off and, and they're being paid. And you can ask the same question about sick pay, sick pay as well. And this is a question that came up the other week and we researched it and wow. I but and even the I believe the answer is yes in terms of head count, but there's some issues with the salary dollars. I don't know if money. They, I don't think the there was some weird thing. We're gonna have to look at that again. It's a good question, Rita. Can we we'll we'll, we'll get a we'll get a, a solid answer on that tomorrow? Yeah. So we've been dealing with a lot of the same numbers, same questions over. Those are kind of solidified in our minds, but this one hasn't come up again recently. So, so that's a good one. I do remember that. I mean, there's two things that we're tracking: it's the salary dollars and it's the FTEs or the hours. And I don't. I, it, I think that you get the get the FTEs, but I don't think the dollars count. But because 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 you get those money back through the tax credits, through the quarterly uh, withholdings. It comes out of that. And at the end of the quarter, if you've paid out more in the paid FMLA or sick time, they actually write you a check every quarter for the difference. So you could count the hours, but you couldn't count the dollars. The dollars, you're, that makes sense. You're double dipping on the dollars. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, uh, Bobby wants to know, how are you going to differentiate between money from revenue and money from the grant used to pay rent, payroll, utilities, et cetera? So I opened a different account. I just put that money in a separate account and that's where I'm spending it from. <laughs> so it, it'll be really simple for me. Um, accountant or accounting software, Diana is saying. Probably need to have an accountant. You can use your accounting software depending on what you have too. Bobby, are you setting the ten thousand aside in a separate account? I did. Yes. There, just fair warning though. We've talked about this previously that the bank that made the loan is ultimately going to be responsible for determining how much of those monies are going to be treated as as, as grant funds and forgiven that you don't have to pay back, and then they submit their findings to the federal government. And if the SBA looks at what the bank says and doesn't agree with it, then the bank basically is holding the bag. So the banks are going to be conservative. They're not going to make it easy. So, you know, I'm being told from, from several sources that your documentation has to be impeccable. Um, so, I mean, if you're really, really good with your accounting, that's great. If it's an area that, that you might need help with, this is one of those areas that reaching out to your CPA and having them help you put a program together and, you know, it's all over the board. And I, you know, I've done a lot of, uh, a lot of coaching, a lot of consulting and, you know, God bless us is all different. We have different talents and some of us aren't really great at that. And we just kind of throw everything in a shoebox and figure it out at the end of the year. And if you do that with these PPP monies, I think that you're going to, going to regret that. That's going to be bad. So, if you don't stay current with your accounting, now is a really, really good time to start. Yeah, yeah, Re really, really careful with the PPP. I think your idle monies, you're going to have a little bit more um, uh, flex room, but you know what, why take a chance, you guys? Why take a chance? With your PPP monies, that there's gonna be very little wiggle room there, even if you have a great relationship with your banker. There, Go ahead, Tom. There's two things going on here with, with any of these funds coming from the federal government, you don't want to commit fraud because you could go to jail, but the bar for that is, you know, kind of high. I mean, if you're, you know, doing your best to, you know, run your business and being responsible, I mean, you want to read the rules, but you're going to be, you're going to be, be fairly good, but the bar to, we're going to be centered around. The bar is going to be kind of low. It's going to be hard to do the fraud thing unless you just are, are doing something. What do they call it? Chicanery and malfeasance, I guess, is what they call stuff like that in the legal world. Um, but 
it's gonna it's not gonna be too hard at all to kind of get tangled up and not get the full benefit of of uh, the grant money for the PPP for that eight week period. Your your bookkeeping has to be on mark for that. So, um, you know, don't don't take that for granted. Don't don't say, well, I'm just gonna figure it out at the end of the year, or you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna figure it out later, you're gonna miss the boat. Yeah. You're not going to go to jail, but you're going to have to pay all that money back. Which is not going to be fun. Not going to be fun at all. So um, also, um, Leslie is pointing out that her CPA said to create a new account in QuickBooks and track funds. It'll have its own P&L. So in QuickBooks, you can create another company, right? So it's the same, you're still sort of tracking it in your office on your same software, but it's going into a separate account so that you can see where the money's going. That seems like a really good idea. Um, I know some people that are tracking the money in the bank and on their um, on their desktops, either in Excel or Word or some other way as well. Um, I think better safe than sorry when it comes to this money. This money is going to be a huge boon to us, but if we don't take care, it could really come back to bite us in the butt. And I know that everybody is feeling really good. Thanks, Ernie, about the um, Tom info. And I know everybody's feeling really good now about, you know, the economy's opening back up. They're, they're going to be letting us back out into the world again. The beginning of the month here, we're like a week away for a lot of people. Some people are even opening up, I think, as early as Monday. So I, I know that a lot of people are feeling like, oh, okay, it's all in our rear view mirror. But it's not. Guys, we're really at the beginning stages of the money portion of it, too. So it's just starting. We <laughs> really got to take care. Don't, don't get comfortable and just be like, eh, all right, I, 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 I'm good now. Mm -mm. We're not there yet. And even as far as the sickness, we don't, we don't really know yet. Right, Tom? I mean, you're, you're really thinking like I am that... I mean, I know I'm thinking this is going to get worse again, you guys. I mean, yeah. I'm glad that we're like going like this. I, I'm super optimistic and I'm not fear mongering here, but I fully expect an upswing again, uh, an uptick at least. There's a, there's a, there's a couple of reasons to think. For that. Um, one of them is just the natural cycle of, of, of how viruses work. And the Center for Disease Control has come out as recently as, as yesterday saying that we need to be prepared for another spike of COVID-19 this winter because that's the way these viruses normally work. And they're, they, they said, along with that message, that everybody needs to get a flu shot this time around. Typically, they make around 150 million flu shots every season. And they're going to like double down on that. And there's like 330 million people in the U.S. They're planning on and hoping that everybody that lives in the U.S. is going to get a flu shot this fall. So if COVID-19 gets bad, at least we won't have a bunch of people in the hospital with the flu at the same time as we're, we're, we're dealing with COVID-19. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all need to be doing that. Um, Heather. And the, other, and the other thing, Liz, ahead, is in here because it's, 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 the yeah. thought, thought's worth hearing. Um, in some of the uh, some of the Asian countries that did a really really good job of of isolating you know sheltering at home and then doing all the uh, testing and tracking and they got their numbers down and really low and they started opening things back up again and you remember the restaurant we showed you I mean that happened back early on that was in um, you know late January but you know there's a several Asian countries that it's spiking now and the temperature over there is like over 90 degrees. So, I mean, it's summertime temperatures and they're starting to have to shut stuff down again. So you look at all of that. I mean, and one other thing, because this is worth noting as well, you hear a lot of people talking about, you know, getting a therapeutic or, or which is something that you can take that when you get sick, you won't wind up in the hospital or, 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 or die. Remdesivir was, was, was a drug that everybody's really, really high on, but yeah, their stock went up, uh, you know, a lot. Um, Gilead the company that makes it, their stock went really up, but it went down a lot because they came up with more data that suggested that just as many people got sick and died using that drug as used a placebo. So, 
And before that, they had that quinine-based drug that everybody was high on, and then they're figuring out that's doing more harm and good. So I don't think they've really even got something on the placebo. And they're hoping they can come up with a vaccine, say, within a month to 18 years. But guess what? That stuff is really, really hard to make. What did you just to make say, Huh? They're hoping to come up with a vaccine when? Within a year, maybe, a year and a half. Um, but that's just coming up with a vaccine and saying, okay, well, you can give this to people and they won't catch or the chances of them catching COVID-19 will be low, but it'll take another year, year and a half to make enough of it to give it to everybody. So I've, I've been, been doing some reading and there's a lot of really smart people out there that says it might be three years before this thing's completely in our rear view mirror and we aren't you know, worried about, you know, large social gatherings and big sporting events. And, you know, this is going to be, you know, which is just good to know because we're putting our business plans together and we're trying to figure out how are we going to to, to compete in a, in a COVID-19 world. And I've heard some people say, well, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing all of this because it'll be gone in a couple of months. And no, you want to be putting a business plan together for the next few years of doing business in a COVID-19 world. And the reason why we're calling this smart business moves is because it's not going to be short term. The reason why we're doing this every day and have been for six weeks now is it's not going to be a, a small thing. Something Tom said the other day that I thought, oh, yes, awesome. I love that is if your biz, if you're planning that your business is going to look the same in one year as it did in January, that's faulty thinking. That's faulty. You need to be thinking, how is my company going to look in one year? How is it going to look different? What is my plan to get it there? If your plan is to get it back to where you were, it's not good, y'all. It's not good. Um, I want to hit up some of these questions and comments we have here, Tom, real quick. Um, Heather, okay, last night was the last day for free, and it was charging us. So, Heather, I'm not exactly sure what the problem is that you're having, but... You're in my MMA group and you're going to get it for free. So stop blowing up my feed, girl. I'll talk to you offline. Talk to me in the MMA group, okay? Put the wine uh, down. Sure. What? Put the wine down, Heather. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shannon, thanks. Rita, thanks. Yeah, you guys are all welcome. Um, Susan, for the idle advance portion, I can pay myself with it, correct? At least a portion. My understanding, no problem there. Would you agree, Tom? Your understanding, same thing for the idle. I think it's yeah. good. Yep. Um, if employees are receiving unemployment, is a company allowed to apply for a PPP loan? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yep, apply, apply. Um, FYI, I just received an email from SBA about their webinars for tomorrow, Monday, and Tuesday. Free registration, just a thought. And she posts that link. So, we're not going to post it again, you guys. You're going to have to scroll up to go find it because absolutely, I'll be on those. You want to see me? I'll be on those. Uh, Marsha says, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Marsha, uh, the virus is just beginning. Uh, you know, the definitely the effects of the virus are, are just in the new stages here. Um, yeah, I'm with Leslie. Keep in mind. Come fall, we may very well be right back where we are now and then some. Does anyone require employees to take the flu shot? Robin is asking. Hmm, I'm, I'm not sure about requirements. Um, to, to, I'm not sure if you could require that. Could you tell me? You can for that. Mm -hmm. If if you work in some healthcare settings, I think that you can make it a requirement. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if a house cleaning company can make it a requirement or not. I, I have my doubts, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But I can, know that. You can, offer, ahead, you can offer it and pay for it, encourage everybody to do it, and yeah. educate them on all the reasons why they should do it. and. Hey, offer a benefit for doing it, right? For the people that do do it. Um, I know that when I was cleaning uh, um, a medical clinic that I could require that they have a hep C shot if they wanted to uh, work in that, that, that um, office building. And yes. if they didn't want to, then they could not work for me. That was also an option. So, um, but not, legally I could do that, I know. 
but yeah, but that's mandated by Department of Health. Yep. For yep, people it was. Who are working with at risk patients. Yeah. But if you're working at McDonald's or if you're working for just, I mean, house cleaning company is just a business. There's no, you know, yeah, Department of Health regulations. So you, I, I think, I think your best bet is to, to offer it as a benefit. And there's a lot of uh, companies who will like send a nurse over and you know, with the insurance the way it is, I don't know. They might even do it, you know, for, 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 for free in some cases. Um, I'll, I'll bet that's coming up. I bet that's yeah. coming next. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. You know, um, we make it a fun thing too um, to get the flu. <laughs> as fun as you can make a flu shot, right? Um, but we, we 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 do them in little little parties. We we do like a, a little flu shot party, and so you know, four people, six people will all go together. We'll buy lunch, and you know, uh, so we kind of make it a little bit of an event. So, you know, you can find ways to get people to do it. I, I, I'd like to get everybody done if at all possible. Um, and Leslie also, she offers to pay, and, but she doesn't require it. You know, things are going to change, you guys. We got, we got to open up our thinking. What? I don't know. Can I require it? Do I want to require it? Hmm. Do I want to? I, I don't even know. Just having that conversation, Robin, I think is really smart. Think about these things because things are going to be different moving forward. And so we have to challenge our previously held truths and beliefs about stuff. Things are changing and there are going to be different requirements, different acceptances, etc. cetera. Uh, okay, let's see. Susan says, there are a lot of reasons to not get a flu shot too. Yep, I, I've heard some of that. Um, um, Leslie doesn't, she says she doesn't get them. Robin, we would pay for the flu shot if employees take it. Also, if we are sending people into homes disinfecting, they should be protected. So you might have some, some argument there for them. All right, I, I think I got us a little bit caught up there. Thanks you guys, letting me take a couple of minutes to catch us up. Um, I, I wanted to say there was something that somebody mentioned about one of the loans that I wanted to talk about. Did I, did I tell you about PP money or, or, or PPP money for Charleston yesterday? You did. You did. You had gotten it before the call. Yeah, and it just kind of flared up unexpectedly. Well, guess what I did today? Started thinking about, well, gee, what does this mean and what do I need to do to get prepared for I thought I was going to have 10 days to figure this out before the money hit, but um, we started looking at it and okay, check, check this out and see if this, this fits, fits your understanding. It went into the bank yesterday, which was Wednesday. The actual eight week period starts our next pay period, which for us is the upcoming Sunday. Okay. Which kind of makes sense because if it started in the middle of the week, how do you really even track the hours and the, dollars you know yeah the how of it always seems really really difficult so, okay so that makes sense so we got to get our plan together before before beginning of next week so we're, we're bringing people back we're going to be doing some training we're trying to get more work lined up um we have some people who are a lot of times workforce is independent contractors doing website design you know some some marketing graphics stuff like that and we're looking at bringing some of that in house and like putting somebody on the payroll for, for a while to do that. That's one extra person. And 75% of those dollars have to go towards, uh, towards salaries and salary related expenses. And I guess that's the other part of it because 25% of it then can go to operating expenses, rent, uh, utilities. utilities. Uh, yeah. Um, our overhead relative to our payroll, that 25% that could go to other things, we don't have enough other things to spend all that money in eight weeks. So if we're going to use it, most of it has to go to payroll, which is, which is cool. But, you know, we're, we're thinking about what are, what are all the things that are really value added? We're not going to just pay people just for the sake of paying people. But if 
we can get a lot of work done, not only in, in, in cleaning homes and generating revenue, but but important stuff from a from a marketing and technology and and, and those perspectives, and maybe get some of that uh, paid with salary dollars. You know, even coaching and consulting. If you wanna you wanna hire Liz as a as a coach, once you get your PPP money, maybe you put her on your payroll. Oh. Yeah, I'll go on some people's payroll. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm not doing it on anybody's payroll right now. That's not how they pay me, Tom. Although I don't really know how they pay me since you collect the money. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of tongue in cheek, but I was thinking about this. If you were going to be hiring consultant, coach, any type of outside help for that eight week period, if you make them an employee, then their hours count towards your hours and the dollars count towards the dollars. And even if you don't qualify a hundred percent to get that, those uh, salary dollars, you know, waived and, 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 and treated as a grant for that eight week period, you're going to get a chunk of it. You're going to, you know, yeah. it's going to be a grant. So, and the more dollars and the more hours you put in there, the bigger that chunk's going to be. We were running the math and kind of scratching our head, and it's like we really see this as an opportunity to to, to get a lot of value-added work done that we may not have been able to afford to have done under under normal circumstances. Well, I I think everybody's kind of thinking that we we do need to talk a little bit more, Tom, about what are some of the options? What are some of the other things that you're doing? I, I do love that idea. Nobody has, I don't think I've heard of anybody hiring different types of people to put on the payroll, which I love. That's going right back to what I was saying before. You know, you gotta be thinking a little bit outside the box, doing things a little bit different than what you've done in the past. Um, we've got a couple of things there. Sarah wants to know, I wanted to use about 90% of it to go to payroll. Um, you can just remember, Sarah, that 90% is not the number that will be forgiven, but you can absolutely spend 90% of it on payroll. 75% uh, is what's going to be forgiven no. if you're fully backed up. By actually, you have to spend 75, you have to spend 75 or more on payroll. If you spend 100% of it on payroll, and if you've got your, your if, if the full time equivalents meet the requirement, and if everybody's making at least 75% of the wages they were making after, you know, during that eight week period as they're making before, whatever, if you meet all the criteria, you're fine if 80%, 100% goes to payroll, but you can't spend 50% on payroll and 50% can't go less than 75. Right. They want it. They want all it. Right, so not less than 75. Protection program. If you put every dollar of it in payroll, they, they're, they're fine with that. Mm. It's all mm. the other stuff. If you ever use right, so labor or, you know, subcontractors or anything that could be turned into somebody on your payroll for that eight week period, it seems like it makes sense to do that. That's the way that we're looking at it. So, Tom, talk to me about temp labor. When I hire um, temp labor through like um, I hired some, uh, a couple of people down in Portland. But I hired them through an agency. Whose payroll are they on? Are they still on my payroll? I mean, I am writing the check. It's going through them, right? It's, so it, keep that in mind, you guys. It, it, it all comes down to who the employer of record is, whose tax ID number is on their W-2 at the end of the year. And that's the employer. So the temp labor agency in that case is the employer. You're just using a temp agency basically renting labor from from another company all right so don't go that route don't think that you're gonna hire some temp labor from an agency and you're going to be writing them checks so that my money will be forgiven it won't be i i have heard a couple of people talking about that and i had um told them that hey, i didn't think that that worked because it didn't for us that the other people were the employer of record so we need to make sure and everybody help us get that that out there. I've heard quite a few people saying that they were talking about that. Um, Lily, heck yeah, you can hire me, girl. I'll work for you. You're one of my favorite people. 
Uh, let's see, uh, Robin, is your bank watching payroll spending other than cleaning payroll? Uh, all, it's, to my understanding, Robin, it's all payroll. It doesn't have to be cleaning payroll, all okay. payroll. Anything. So as anything, as marketing. Are, yeah, as long as they're an employee under your tax ID number. Now, I think it's important that they're doing productive value-added work for your business. You don't want to be paying people that if somebody asks, well, what's this person's job and what did they do for that eight week period? And you say, well, nothing. It was just my next door neighbor and I put him on the payroll and he was doing nothing. I think you could go to jail for that. But if you hire yeah. somebody to develop, you know, rebuild your website, or if you hire somebody to do graphics design and develop marketing material, or develop, you know, whatever, and they were getting a paycheck every week and they were giving you deliverables every week that if somebody asked, well, what did this person do? And you can say, well, they built this website and they developed these brochures and they did this marketing campaign and that's business. I mean, that's, that's absolutely real job. Well, and your Robin says, sounds like you're transferring your marketing expense to payroll. Um, not so much transferring as they are on payroll. You know, if I could hire somebody to do something that I might be getting another company doing for me, then that might make sense while you've on your eight week, uh, you know, PPP money clock. Well, and that this is what Linda is saying. Linda, I like this. I'm with you, girl. You just gave me an idea. She says, I'm going to put my graphic designer, website designer on payroll. Exactly. Me too. Because I have not had mine on payroll, right? So, and I'm right in the middle of redesigning my website right now. So, bam. Hey, Riley, if you're on here, Get ready to be on payroll, dude. That's awesome. Yep, I like that. Um, Julie, my bank said my eight weeks started Monday as soon as the money hit my account. So that's interesting because that is what I have always heard is that the, the minute the money hit your account. But Tom's bank told him something completely different. Tom, can you explain what they told you? Well, I asked... Kyle, you know who Kyle is. Mm -hmm. He's like, figure some of this stuff out for me. One of the questions I gave him was, you know, when am I actually on the clock? And he was looking at his computer, and I don't know exactly where it was, but he read it to me, and it was like, you, you're the eight week periods. In the, what he read to me was starts the first pay period following the disbursement of funds. Which, so, Julie, maybe go look at your um, contract and see if you can find it there. Um, remember way back in the day, you guys, when we were talking to the banks and we were telling you guys, call your banks, apply, apply. And your banks were like, what's a PPP? What's an idol? They didn't know. So you're, I, I wouldn't 100% put all of my trust in what the bank says, Julie, go ahead and read your contract and maybe ask somebody else. We have gotten, although <laughs> keep if in mind that if you think about the mechanics of, you know, what were the hours and what were the payroll dollars for that eight week period? If that eight week period starts in the middle of a pay period, it would be mathematically next to impossible to even calculate that. So it has to start at the beginning of a pay period. I don't know that that's true, Tom. I, I see that you could put those monies into an Excel spreadsheet and it would not be mathematically impossible. Somebody that's got any real payroll and a number of employees, the amount of work, most payroll, most, anybody who's outsourcing their payroll, they'd have yeah. no clue. They would have no clue. Anybody that uses paychecks yeah. or pay core, they would have no clue. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, smaller companies, easier. So it doesn't really seem to make sense, Julie. But again, don't, you know, don't, don't go by what we're saying. We're just saying, you know, this is what Tom has said. This is what he read, was read somewhere. Check your contract, look, um, and then always uh, operate on the safe side, right? Don't, don't take unnecessary challenge, chances that you don't need to take. Um, is your bank asking you those questions? 
Robin, I'm not exactly sure which questions that you're talking about there. Maybe clarify just a little bit for us. Um, Marsha says maybe it's up to the bank. Yeah, could be. I, I don't know. Since the is the the bank is the one that decides which funds get forgiven. So maybe I don't know. Uh, that, that makes as much yeah that makes as much sense as other stuff that I've heard for sure. I'm still going to go. I'm still going um, to go back to the accounting side of this and. What little bit I know about accounting tells me that it would be next to impossible to do the math unless it began on a pay period. Now, maybe it begins if I got the money Wednesday, maybe it goes back, you know, three days ago that 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 you could do the math there. But or, you know, but it, it practically it seems like it would just have to start at the beginning of the pay period. So first, congratulations to Paula and Diana. Uh, you both got, um, and it looks like you both got PPP money. Yay, congratulations. And hope you have your plan in place for what you're doing. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Oh, I guess we're not. We'll yeah. probably talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. Let me uh, jump into... And also, if you could share Ernie's um, event, Tom, would be great. I think that's what we're looking at here. Uh, this is okay, Friday nice. at uh, the 24th. This is a, uh, a special uh, webinar that uh, Ernie Hartson, who works with us in cleaning business today, is, is going to be leading with, uh, with Home Advisor. And uh, they'll have some special, uh, I guess, useful information on how to generate more business uh, during a downturn. I guess that's like a smart business move in a COVID-19 world, right? I'm thinking. Yeah. So that is tomorrow, you guys, 9.30 Pacific, 10.30 Mountain, 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern. And looks like it's pretty easy to find right there. Yeah, it'll, it's a pop up, bang, there it is. Yeah, join right there, save your seat. I'm going to go, I haven't done that yet, and I should have. I meant to yesterday, let me write it down so that I do it. Here's where you subscribe to Cleaning Business Today. And I am going to go here and show you the secret link to how to get to, to all of our resources. And I'll also show you if you want to take the COVID-19 class and take the test and get your certificate. You can do that on moderncleaning.com. Oops. And it is $39 now. Um, I had some other People in the the, the, the the training and coaching world that were, I guess, telling us that it should be a number of times higher than that, but we didn't want to do it. We wanted to cover our cost, but we want as many people to take it as we can. So this is uh, this is what we're doing with it. And if you want to go, you just come here, you click on this link off of Modern Cleaning, and this is where you sign up, and it'll take you right into the program. You get to see the videos and. Um, it's about three hours worth of training and, and then you take the, the test. Awesome. Uh, so we got a couple of quick questions here. Robin, is the bank asking you about the employee and what they are doing for the company? So far, nobody's asking anybody anything. Um, my guess, this is just me, my guess would be if your numbers seem wonky for any reason at all, there might be a conversation about that. I, I'm not sure. They may ask you what what was being done over that period of time. We don't know right now. Again, nothing's been written about how that's going to happen. That is something that's supposed to be coming to us on Tuesday. Fingers crossed, everybody, that we're going to get that um, clarification on Tuesday. Um, Shannon, what if you don't have any employees? Uh, not exactly sure what the question is there. Apply for everything, Shannon. Um, one of Tom's companies doesn't have any employees and he got a thousand dollars. So yeah, give it a yeah, shot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, an advance, a thousand dollar advance toward his idol. So uh, you can apply for, for for everything. Are they still taking EIDL? I thought, and I haven't checked. Um, I heard that. There was a time they stopped doing it, but there's another $60 billion in this legislation that the House is going to be voting on here this evening to go to idle. So even if they stop taking it, they're going to start taking it again. So do the idle and do the PPP. Yeah. See what happens. And, and there's lots of different places to go for the idle as well, you guys. Um, um, try your local bank because remember, your banker is going to be the, oh no, that's never mind. Idle has to be through the SBA website. Right, it has to go through the website. That's why I was correcting myself right there. Um, so, got to do that. Do that that way. But if you have no employees, absolutely do do it. And if you haven't received your PPP, and they say that you don't have to reapply again, but you can. There's no reason why you you don't have to, or that you shouldn't. So, go ahead and apply at some other places. Now, a lot of people are wanting to to apply at their own bank where they have a, a banking relationship because the, the bankers are going to have um, some say over what gets forgiven or not. Um, but there are other options out there too if, if you are knowing that you really, really need the money. Um, let's see, thanks Paula. I love these earrings as well. Um, thanks guys, tomorrow is Friday. We have not laid off any of her 20 employees. I plan to put accountant and IT on the payroll. So I'm thinking anybody you can put on payroll seems that is a legitimate expense to your company, people that you're actually paying. Sounds smart to me. All right, so we told about Ernie. We told about, the one thing we did not talk about, Tom, we always do this, we keep forgetting. Uh, we get carried away. We didn't talk about upcoming training. So yes, yes. you wanna just drop a, a quick, a little bit of info on there. Yeah, we're going to be rolling it out about this time next week, late next week, and it's going to be uh, for professional house cleaners training, and it's going to be broader than just the COVID nineteen. You know, we're gonna we're gonna cover safety, but safety in a more broader context. It will address pathogens and infection control, but it will also include all the other OSHA type uh, training that you would want your uh, cleaning professionals to have. Um, it's gonna cover the science of cleaning, you know, how chemicals work, we'll cover um, surfaces, we'll cover uh, equipment and equipment maintenance. We're gonna cover a broad spectrum. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have more details in, in, in the days ahead. This is, this is material that we've, 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 we've accumulated over, over a long time. And uh, we'll, um, you know, we're, we're, we're quickly pulling it together because we think the time is right, the need is there. Um, you know, we got to get ready to go back to work, and this is the type of material that, that we're going to need to 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 get the results that we're going to want to get in the uh, in, in, in a COVID nineteen world. So um, we'll be be offering that through Modern Cleaning and. You know more more news to come but uh we're, we're we're quickly getting there so more information about that tomorrow also more information tomorrow about smart business moves as you begin to spend your ppp what are some of the things that you can do to um, best utilize that ppp money we'll be spending some time on that as well but we are not going to have a long call tomorrow because it's friday folks and we're going to have a nice tight call right tom do i get to go fishing yes 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 you know uh, I, have, I have some minnows down at the dock i've been feeding them all week okay good i i remember feeding them with the dog food i remember doing that out at your place yeah, yeah I, I we want to get tom out fishing right you guys let's get tom fishing tomorrow but not after not until after you get your work done tom facebook live and fishing or I guess fishing in the morning first. Any, anything else here, Liz? Uh, not for me. No. Nope. Okay, guys. Hey, thank you a bunch. Really appreciate you uh, taking some time and in, in, in sharing it with us. Like Liz says, this is as uh, beneficial for us as it is for you. And together, you know, we're, we're going to figure this thing out. So, uh, you know, stay safe and we'll uh, see you at five o'clock tomorrow. Thanks, guys.
Bye, y'all.